Welcome to the Creative Push. Today I have Terrell Thornhill. He's an all-around artist here in Nashville, Tennessee. He does music. Uh, he does screen printing. Tell me about yourself as a child. Were, were you creative as a kid? Too much so. I got in a lot of trouble because I asked a lot of questions. <laughs> I grew up in South Mississippi, about maybe 45 minutes from the Gulf Coast. And um, where I grew up, uh, there wasn't a lot of art. There, it, and when I say art, I mean visual arts. Uh, I, was, I wasn't exposed to it. Art is something you did as a hobby. I remember when you, you know, in elementary school, when they would say, uh, you know, what, what do you, what do you want to do uh, when you grow up? And I always said I wanted to be an artist. And uh, the response was always the same. Oh, that's nice. Um, but, but what do you want to do for money? You know, it was like, what do you really want to do? That was kind of the attitude. I was in my second year of college before I set foot into an art gallery. I mean, I wasn't, you know, deprived of, uh, of, of, of cultural stuff. There's plenty of culture down there, but uh, not much that, uh, that, that resonated with me. I kind of had to make my own way. And, you know, what I do for a living, the screen printing, I got into that very, very early when I was like 12. I would hang out at the where they printed T-shirts. And it was amazing to me how they could, you know, make a screen and, and print an image. And uh, it, it was like, OK, uh, you could do posters and you can do books or you could print any you just you know, you can print anything like this. and. Uh, in college, I had a, uh, a, a, a professor that uh, one of my art, my painting teacher, uh, saw one of the paintings that I was working on. He goes, you could reproduce these by screen printing on canvas. And I'm, I didn't know anything about it. So, I, you know, and there was not, no other resources for me. So I went to the library. And the more I read, the more I loved it. And the more I, I, I the more I got into it, the more into it I was. And so I just figured it out, you know, just trial and error. Um, all of my equipment today I made because the stuff that's on the market doesn't work the way I wanted it to work. So I kind of fabricated my own. I've just kind of figured it out. That's really the creative process. It's figuring it out. Something about, you know, stumbling through the darkness and as it reveals itself to you, Something about that process appeals to me, and it, it's 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 very eye opening and it's very liberating and you know and, and I'm in here printing uh, you know all the time in the middle of a project and you know <laughs> some of my some of my neighbors are like well we hear you in there working because I'm like aha yeah <laughs> you know, I'm talking to my dog and everything but you know I, I just i just love the process i just that that's why i do what i do the, the fact that that people um you know will see an image that, that that or a piece that i produce or or they they like it enough to you know hang it in their homes you know I, that's that's just gravy you know where did you grow up um i grew up in hattiesburg mississippi i was born in louisiana and we moved there when i was probably in kindergarten. Were either of your parents artistic? My mom dabbled in artwork. I and mean, She liked to do uh, paintings for her friends, you know, and I mean, it was more of an arts and crafts kind of thing. I mean, she was, she, she was decent. She, you know, did a little portraiture, but you know, when mom had her paints and easels out, it was like in a room where the kids weren't. So, so, you know, I got to see some of mom's work, but I didn't really, I wasn't really exposed to it because it was something that she did, you know, and she didn't necessarily involve us in it. We were sitting around the, the kitchen table and they were like uh, going through like childhood pictures of me and stuff like that. And, and mom said, uh, said, oh, here's his, here's, here's Terrell's report cards. Look on the back of all of them. They're, they say, all he wants to do is draw. All he wants to do is draw. All he wants to do is draw. We, we, we're always catching him drawing, you know, instead of doing his work. I know that you also do music. I left home at 16 and joined a band. I was going to be an underwater archaeologist, but uh, 
I fronted a band up until like my early 20s. We did the circuit from Texas over to Florida and back playing for anybody that would listen. So your artwork started with music. Yeah. I mean, because I still, when I started screen printing, I was doing our t-shirts and stuff and, um, you know, and, and producing those in our, in our little practice room that we had and, um, uh, and doing like, uh, posters and, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. So you were designing all of the merch yeah. for the band. Yeah. It, all, all the merch that we did, you know, I, we printed that. It was a, uh, it was a handy little thing to know how to do, you know. So you said you started tr- drawing. Obviously, was your favorite thing as a child. Yeah. What was the subject matter? I've always been drawn to nature, you know, trees and and animals. And in '93, I uh, I turned down a uh, developmental deal with Capitol Records, New York, and my management company. Uh, shelved my project for three years. I really can't stand the music business. I mean, I know I live in Nashville. I love playing music. I love performing. I mean, I still do. And writing and the creative process and everything, but the industry is is, is just, you know, what was it that uh, Hunter S. Thompson said? It was a, a shallow money trench where good men die like dogs. And then there's the bad side. Music does the same thing as art, or, or it can, at least good art and good music. It, it stirs the soul. It, it makes you think. If, if someone is standing in front of one of my art pieces and going, hmm, and coming up with their own conclusions, I've, that's what good art does. I mean, it's... It's to stir the soul. It's to stir conversation. You know, I've got one of my pieces. I, you know, I love watching people look at my art, and and eventually I I might walk over and you know and and strike up a conversation without even telling them that you know I'm like that's an interesting piece. What what <laughs> what do you think about it? And there's this girl. I mean, literally, I didn't know, but she was standing there looking at it. it was it's a it was an image of a stripped bicycle chained to a rack. It was one of my uh, first reduction method screen prints that I did in order to figure out the process. And um, she's standing there, and she's and I realize she's almost in tears. And I'm like, "What are you? What do you see there?" And she goes, "That's what abuse looks like. That's why it's called the risk of security. The piece is called the risk of security because when you secure something, you tie it down." You know, and but the risk is once you are secure, the things that make us secure allow people to come and pick what they want off of us, you know, and get what they need from us. So it's uh, and she got that. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly why I did that. What year did you move to Nashville and why did you move to Nashville? My first wife, uh, she was a high school sweetheart. Um, she packed everything that we owned in the only car that we owned and put my two-year-old son in the car and moved to Nashville. And I was supposed to pack up everything else and sell the house and, and move up in, in the summer of 1993. Um, when, when I did that and, and moved up here, she was like, well, I don't know if we... I don't know if I want to be married anymore. And then once you got here? Once I got here, I, I, I talked her into um, working it out. And um, we ended up having another child. And uh, shortly after that child was born, um, we were in a car wreck. And she was in a coma for three months. And um, in and out of occupational therapy and different you know, cognitive therapies and everything until you know, for years. So uh, at that time, I was doing graphic design for a living on a freelance basis and, you know, raising kids, you know, while she was getting better. It was, uh, it was difficult, you know. And one day we're sitting out outside and, you know, I think we were having like a family barbecue or a couple, you know, neighborhood barbecue or something. 
and I'm sitting out there and I'm like, I'm going to build an art studio onto this house and I'm going to develop a series. I'm going to make my own paper. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make my own paper and I'm going to screen print on it. <laughs> well, about two years later, that's exactly what I did. Is that when you got out of graphic design and kind of went on as a full-time artist? The graphic design supported my art habit. And now I'm getting to a place where my art is people are seeking me to do graphic design because they like my art. And that's what I've always wanted. I wanted the art to serve the design, you know, and um, it's, it's about 50, 50 right now. What is one thing you wish you had known when you got started? I would say, you know, don't let anybody dissuade you. You know, I mean, it's, I've had, I've had, you know, people tell me, you don't, you're not an artist. You have an expensive hobby. Well, the first show that I, first solo show that I did in Nashville right after the pandemic was tentatively titled Expensive Hobby. <laughs> <laughs> With over 20 years worth of screen print art. <laughs> but uh, we ended up not, we ended up changing the name because we didn't, you know. Anyway, I just yeah, I would say just don't let anybody, don't don't let anybody kick your can down the road. That's your job, you know. You get to decide where it goes and and, and how you do and and uh, you know that's the important thing is being true to yourself. I wish that I would have had someone to really push that in me. I I don't I don't know where it came from. I've never let anybody tell me what time it is, especially as far as art's concerned. Um, it's just always, I'm, I'm, I've just, I've just always kind of done it and just let the chips fall where they may. What was your biggest failure or what has been your biggest failure? That's a hard question to answer because, I mean, I, I don't consider it a failure because I learned from it. You know, I mean, um, uh, you know, I, I talk. I talk about the artistic process. Um, it, it 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 basically comes down to f it up and fix it. That's literally the creative process. You know, you do something and you're like, okay, don't do that anymore. You learn the limitations of your of your medium. You know what paint can do, what ink can do. Uh, you know, in order to achieve the effect that you're trying to get. You know, and uh, so I, I, I don't want to say I don't have any failures, but the failures have always taught me something. So I don't, I don't, I don't consider them, them failures because I built on them and, and I learned from them and it made me a better artist and a better printmaker. Who are your influences? And I learned, I've learned to appreciate Warhol and, and his work and what he did. Um, he was definitely filled in niche and he he was groundbreaking in you know what is art what is not art he he's he's kind of the guy that uh, one of the guys that got that ball rolling but my but my favorite artist is Roy, is Roy Lichtenstein this guy <laughs> he was a pop artist that um and his work was just so immensely, immensely different than what anybody else was doing. And he didn't care, you know, and he just he just kept on doing it. And he did sculptures and he did it was all very true to his reproducing print using print. And I was fascinated by that. John Singer Sargent, he the way he works and the way he paints is is uh, you see things in his work that aren't there um you, you 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 see little details in like hinges in cabinetry behind the subject and if from 10 feet away when you get up close they're just not there very expressive brushwork you know in some um uh, in some areas that may seem out of focus you know and um you know and i tried to include that in a couple of my pieces those are the ones that i that i really really gravitated to 
explain to me your technique and what makes your technique different than the average screen printer because most people think of screen printing of t-shirts well today there's a method of producing stencils. Basically, it's smearing some emulsion onto a screen, a microfilament screen, very fine mesh, and allowing it to dry in the dark. After it dries and you expose it to high-intensity UV light, it crystallizes and it's no longer water-soluble. You would produce one screen for every uh, color. What I do in the reduction method is you take the largest swath of color and you just print solid. Then you take, you clean all the ink out and then you reduce the stencil. You put some more of that glue stuff so the ink starts stacking up. You're using one screen, but you're producing ever so smaller, smaller, smaller until there's absolutely nothing left. And uh, that's, the, that's the method that, uh, that I like to use. And there's three or four other different methods that people don't really do anymore that, um, that, that are kind of obsolete because they're so labor intensive, like hand painting and removing. And, and oh, there's, there's, there's about 20 different ways to make stencils. I employ all of those techniques on the same piece <laughs> just from whatever what's going to work the best and what I'm trying to achieve whether it's painting ink directly into the screen or if it's uh, you know doing a, a pull and you know, I use all of those methods in order to, to achieve what I'm trying to do. Walk me through an average day of what you do as far as the process the amount of hours. Screen printing is a process that's made for large-scale production of anything. I go through the same work and the same setup to produce four editions of a print as someone who does a thousand. And the reason I do that is because I don't want a thousand. I want four. <laughs> And if I'm doing a thousand, then I have to spend all of this time, you know, all this time printing. What I, what I enjoy is the process. So I'm going to do four and I'm going to set those aside and then I'm going to go to the next one. <laughs> that also brings more value to your imagery because there's very limited. Well, you know, I'm, Yes, yes and no. I mean, I'll probably never see it in my lifetime, but uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, th there'll be a, a vast closet full of stuff, you know, <laughs> when, I, when I'm done. What is creativity to you? I cannot imagine life without creativity. It's creativity is, is the lifeblood and the life force of discovery. Uh, there is no discovery without creativity. You, you find out who you are. You find out how to do stuff. You find out other ways of doing things. And it's, it's what makes life interesting. Creativity is the source of, it's, it's what makes life interesting. It, it's, it, 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 and that you know music too whether we're talking about art or music or or uh, you know songwriting or it, it's 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 it underscores our existence and it gives our existence meaning and it helps us find our way forward it's like the expression of self yes yeah yeah, yeah. and it's all everyone has it everyone not everyone has uses it. it but everyone has everyone it. has it Everyone has it, and you know, if, if, if they're not using it, they need to learn and dig a little deeper and learn how to use it. What inspires or motivates you to create? I'll see something. Sherry and I were in, in the car, and I looked, literally looked over on the, the side of the, the, the road and said, okay, I know what my next series is going to be. And then I explained it. It's, it's going to look like, and, and then I actually took a picture of these weeds 
that prompted and they you know, no, they no they don't look anything like this but it's never what i see it's a passing glimpse out the window you know of the car it's something you think you see that's what the artist's job is the artist is a filter through which you take normal stuff and you put a spin on it and you 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 get to see what the artist sees in their head visual art is mainly the one that that allows you to see what's inside of someone else and that's just fascinating to me what do you do when you get stuck or do you ever get stuck i get stuck all the time you keep powering through and you make mistakes and you learn from them a lot of times it's just in the doing you kind of figure stuff out is there one big struggle that you continue to have to tackle with your career as an artist you know money resources you know when i when i when i produce a series you know there's there's expense involved a lot of you know of, you know paper and ink and you know time and I have to schedule my art projects, you know, I generally know how long they're going to take, but I hate stopping. And if I have to stop to, you know, to uh, do some design work or do something that's going to earn a living, you know, uh, you know, I, I understand that's, you know, that's, that's what you got to, you, you got to do what you got to do, but, um, but th that's an obstacle. If I have to stop the creative process to make money, that really irritates me. <laughs> what do you see in your future? Oh, my future's bright. <laughs> mm, you know, I don't know how bright, but uh, I'm I'm I am an optimist. I'm where I need to be. I'm I'm where I want to be. You know, I don't. Uh, my job is to create it and hang it on the wall. It's other people's job to make sense of it. How do you market your work? I'm lucky enough to have a gallery that represents me. Chave has been great about, uh, uh, about you know, uh, helping me uh, promote myself, um, uh, offering me opportunities, and, um, and giving me wall space, you know, and, and we've had a very good relationship. As far as uh, outside of, uh, you know, being represented by a gallery, I, you know, I just, you know, I do commissions sometimes. Um, I use social media uh, a good bit, and if uh, you know, somebody likes something, they can call me. If uh, if it's not something the gallery has an in inventory, then you know I, I'm glad to glad to you know work with them. And you know I I, I love people that uh, that that uh, that ask for my art and are interested in it. What advice can you give? to someone starting out on their own creative path? Don't accept no. Don't, just don't. No is one person's opinion. <laughs> don't accept no. Just, just keep stumbling through the darkness and, and, and you, you'll find little, little points of light here and there that'll, that'll guide you in one way or another. You know, follow the sparkly things. That uh, if, if, if it catches your interest, you know, follow it, be interested, be, uh, and, 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 and I told this to someone the other day, they said, I wish I had time to create. I'm like, there is no time to create. You have to take time. And they said, they said, yeah, I know, but it's so difficult. I've got, you know, so many things going on. I said, no, 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 you're not understanding. I didn't say make time. No one can make time. There's only a certain amount of time in a day. You have to take time. You take it from your kids. You take it from your spouse. You take it from work. You take it from school. You take it. You take that time and you make good use of it. That would be some good advice. I wish I was, I wish someone had told me that. I'm curious what your thoughts are as far as spending time with other creative people. Does that filter into your creativity or 
does it take away from your creativity? I, I know what you mean by that. I know what you mean by that. You know, you you in, in the in, in the idyllic sense that you think that all creative people think alike, and they uh, and and they're all inspired by the same things, and that's not necessarily true. Uh, I've been around some some creative people that are just draining, you know, and um, and and but but on the other hand, I I know some really creative creatively minded people and other artists that uh, are totally inspiring they're always doing something new they're always you know and those are the ones that i kind of uh, th that i kind of like to hang around artists tend to be you know hard to understand and hard to you know the quirky and and all of that kind of thing and and to to hang out with people that kind of get that on a fundamental basis is very refreshing so yeah i i'm fed emotionally by um by hanging out with other artists, everybody's doing something different, and uh, the, uh, the 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 experiences of of sharing work and um, uh, sharing techniques and becoming interested in other people's techniques and stuff. Yeah, that fuels me. That that that, that fuels the creative process. Well, where can people find your work? I'm online at terrellthornhill.com. That's my visual art, and uh, my graphic design is uh, thornhillcreative.com. Well, thank you so much, Terrell, for letting me do this interview with you. Thank you. I've, I've enjoyed it immensely. You've asked some very, very, very good questions, and uh, I, I can't ex express enough how, how much I enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you.